What's up, YouTube? It's Saturday. Uh, we're swatting off people who are trying to squeeze their butts in here before 12 o'clock. My Anakin Cinnamon is done at 12. That's that. Uh, had some interesting customers today. We had a guy with a Ford, Ford Escape 2012. He was here before for exhaust work. So the story was is that he went to Pepsi's and spent $1,500 for an exhaust system. And he didn't even get a whole exhaust system. He actually wound up purchasing uh, a rear converter, muffler, tailpipe for $1,500. They left the OEM front pipe rotted out to death on the car. And then the bolts were so trashed. They, that's probably why they didn't recommend it because they didn't want to deal with broken studs and nuts on the, it's a small little one foot front pipe. So, uh, when he came in for service, um, the engine light was on, the gas cap warning light was on, the front end's making noise, the motor mounts aren't great, the brakes are basically shot in the front. A bunch of issues, right? If he would have wound up coming to Meineke first, right? If he would have wound up coming here first for exhaust, he probably would have never spent $1,500 on the exhaust that he probably technically didn't need the whole thing. Walk around. Please. Um, since he wasn't at an exhaust shop, he got gutted. And then he had to spend another three or four hundred hours here for me to do the hardware front piping gasket. And then give him a list of all the needed repairs. So this was probably like eight months ago. So he shows up again today. Uh, said he hit a puddle and his exhaust is loud. And we're like, all right, no big deal. Let's check it out. Didn't fix any of the previous work that we recommend. Oh, and his ignition housing is just about shot too. You can barely start the car. So we bring the car back in. It's got a door jar warning light on, check engine light's still on, front end's still noisy, brakes feel funny. So basically everything that we talked about eight months ago is still wrong with this car and more. Uh, so now he has a left front tire that's ready to blow out. The rear hatch glass is swinging from the one hinge because the other one decayed away and broke, which is another huge disaster. Never said two words to us about, hey, can you see why that's on? Or maybe you knew. But the point is, if he didn't go to, to Pep Boys first, he came to us, he would have had additional income to fix the, the safety and maintenance issues that are piling up on this car. 60,000 mile, 2012 Ford Escape. So being at the wrong shop, sometimes cost you more money in the long run because you shoot your load right or you spend your wad on fixing something that necessarily could have just been repaired and you might be able to get five or ten more years out of the rest of the exhaust system and there's other systems on your car that require require immediate attention now that now you can't afford and now you just can continue to neglect them so let's talk about it he's here for exhaust it's got a, a wiped out upper gasket no big deal simple repair the ignition housing's shot. That's five or seven hundred dollar job retail, right? Engine lights on, decline diagnostic. So we're going to put that anywhere between five and a thousand. Uh, front end work declined. Didn't, didn't want us to look at it uh, last time he was here. It's even worse now, and his left front tire is completely ready to blow out on the inside edge, and the, the rest of the tire is good, meaning he has alignment issues and front end issues, or maybe just uh, alignment. But I heard noise in the front end, so it definitely needs front end work. The brake rotors were rusted out in the front. Rear drum brakes declined inspection. They squeak on release and the pedals low. Not including neglected maintenance. But the 1500 he spent elsewhere, he could have nipped away at a majority of those repairs. Just to say, because I know how Ford Explorers are, he could have just got away with a resonator in the section that rusts out and maybe get a few more years out of the exhaust. You're talking two or three hundred dollars or maybe less for the resonator on uh, a 2012 Explorer, which is very common. But no, Pep Boys went the whole and I'm not throwing stone at Pep Boys. They did what they do. They're not an exhaust shop. They don't make exhaust. Um, they could have advised going to an exhaust shop to save money. But now his car is still worse. And, you know, he told me he spent 1500 at Pep Boys. I've seen the job. Um, that's probably what it costs for a direct fit cat and back on one of those. But if he would have came here to us, we would have gave him a more affordable solution. Said, hey, take this money here that you're saving, right? And then put this towards your brakes, your front end, your tire. Your rear windshield that's ready to fall off your car 
uh, that you're probably not prepared to deal with that when that falls off. Uh, your ignition housing where you can't start it. So he's got $3,000 worth of repairs that are just piling up and, and it's a shame. 60,000 mile vehicle um, starting off at the wrong shop and then ending up at the right shop and then now I can only lead the horse to water. I can't make him drink it, but it's a shame. He should have came and got a second opinion and we would have said, hey dude, you got a lot of other issues. Let's do this to the exhaust and catch up on the other repairs that needed safety repairs. Uh, and then we'll talk about maintenance once we get your car caught up. But he just fixed the gasket and on his way. So next time I see his car, I'm sure the rear windshield's not gonna be there. He's gonna have plastic tape holding it up. Uh, you're not gonna be able to start the car unless you crank the piss out of the ignition. Uh, he may just wait till the tire blows out before he changes it. I don't really know. But starting off at the right place, can I point to that? Starting off at the right place for uh, the right recommendations, you know, and steering you where you should be uh, versus steering you where you should not be, in my opinion, is he should not have never spent $1,500 on that exhaust system uh, because his car is in such bad shape. But it is what it is. Uh, that was one today. Now, now here's two. We had a 2021 GMC Acadia all-wheel drive 3.6. Uh, customer was told by the dealer to come here for flex pipes, resonator, and a crack in the bracket. This vehicle has near 90,000 miles on it. On her way here, the engine light did illuminate for cat efficiency code. Um, she did not ask for a diagnostic. We brought it in. We advised her. We did a courtesy code pull. Um, the engine oil change light is on and I assure you it's not on because it's just due because it's way overdue it needs a direct fit manifold cat it needs rear converters uh, the resonator the flex pipes so basically everything that's going on in there uh, is bad so and then and Rachel's like well you know should she just trade this car in uh, she says it's been it's been serviced by FC Kerbeck and maintained I'm like what? This car couldn't even make it 100,000 miles without the exhaust system falling to pieces, cat efficiency code. So we couldn't get any parts to fix it today and she still owes money on this car. So Rachel's like, well, I said, whatever money she owes on this car, she's gonna be upside down on her trade-in, right? So if she bought it at the peak of the market and the market's on its way down, uh, plus the mileage is gonna hurt it already, 2021 when it was 100,000 miles on it, so that's a lot of driving. She's in a bad situation. Um, so I told Rachel, I said, I need a direct fit cat. I can make the flex pipes. I need the rear section direct fit because the resonator's rattling inside. Uh, I need spark plugs, GDI, fuel injection service. God knows if the filters have been done. Um, so Rachel's talking to me, she's like, what's a GDI service? She said, I've never heard of that. Well, if you've been getting your car serviced at the dealership, you think that they would be advising you for that stuff? Obviously not because the car couldn't make it 100,000 miles without needing a catalytic converter, an exhaust system. So it's been neglected for some maintenance, and I would love to see the service records. Um, so the end of the story is she's going over to FC Kerbrick to see if they're going to go help her out. Uh, I'm going to assure you they're probably going to say, uh, yeah, you're out of warranty, and that's that. Um, but here's the kicker. Rachel's like, well, are you even going to check the oil? I'm like, did she ask for an oil change? No. I said, well, the oil change light is on, so why would I even check for oil? The car requires an oil change. She goes, well, what if it's burning oil? I said, you got a good point, but I don't have a good baseline anyway. She's already ex over exceeded the oil change because the maintenance counter is saying oil change to do. If she was halfway into her oil change, I could give her a clear depiction of what's happening with her uh, 90,000 mile uh, 2021 Acadia 3.6. I said, but she really needs an oil change, and she really needs to get the car fixed. Uh, so I said, all right, well, I'll humor you, Rachel. I'll pull the dipstick out. Zero oil on the dipstick. There's already engine damage occurring inside of this engine. Uh, so sometimes I can only lead people to the water. I can't lead them to drink. So here's a car from FC Kerbeck that's sold to this lady at 100,000 miles is basically junk so if it has huge oil consumption and 99.9 percent .9 of the people who drive vehicles today have no idea how to check their oil there is no stupid idiot light that comes on and says hey dum dum 
check your oil weekly, right? Uh, or check your oil now, or your oil is low. Those systems just aren't a fit, a, efficient and accurate and don't work. Like people say, oh, well, my oil light never came on. In most cases, they don't. Typically, they're sludged and stuck in the position uh, that says that the, the engine oil's full all the time. So you're never going to you're never going to brainwash the public to check their oil on engines that burn oil by design and then consume oil and drink oil uh, from lack of proper maintenance. So a certain percentage of oil that the engine will use and then the consumer neglecting to do the oil changes early or sooner or regularly um, and overextended them now it becomes a consumer of oil not just a little burner of oil you're consuming oil at a high rate to where you can't control it and you can't stay on top of it so estimated repairs on this vehicle if it doesn't need a short block uh, was about four thousand dollars uh, and it may be a little bit more. I don't even know if she talked about tune-up GDI fuel injection, spark plugs, uh, filters. So I want to say probably six thousand dollars worth of repairs, not including a short block, uh, because now we have no idea how bad the oil consumption is. Um, and if it's drinking three quarts of oil on five thousand miles, it's done. You basically got a pile of pile of junk that you're driving right now. But dealer. Service and maintain means zero, it means goose egg. If you don't have a good service department and service provider and technicians advising you regularly to come in for sooner maintenance, you're done. Your vehicle is garbage. Your, your basically brand new vehicle is garbage right out of warranty uh, and ready for the junkyard because it's cost so much to fix it. And it could have all been avoided. We put oil chain stickers in every customer's car for 3,000 miles and I have maybe two or three people who follow that. I can only just give you the prescription and if you don't take take your medicine, you're in for your, you, you created your own problems uh, and there's no fixing it. And you know, some people may think that I'm the bad guy by saying come in sooner. Coming in sooner is gonna keep you in your car longer and cost you less money in the long run. But that was two vehicles today that were complete basket cases. Um, and I told Rachel, the Ford Escape guy might as well junk it because it's legitimately falling apart at his feet. And uh, and there's no return unless he has some money to put into it. And GMC Acadia, even if she puts four or $5,000 into the obvious repairs on the surface, and we don't know if the oil consumption issue is out of hand, she, she needs a motor or a bottom end. Uh, and it's, it's due for time and change anyway because of the poor maintenance history and the engine running low on oil, overheating time machines. So, sooner than later maintenance, it's, it's you're just completely ruining your next biggest investment, uh, which is your vehicle. Your home group first biggest, if you even own a home, and your next biggest investment is your vehicle. Thanks for watching, have a safe holiday.